Sword of God is alive and powerful, sharper than into Egypt's sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent unto God, a workman that did not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As we are answering back, Zakir Naik, wherewith he has been told that Lord has not been crucified on the cross, and even as such claiming about the claims about the divinity and the deity of my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, wherewith he has been covering so many tapes to answer him, at the same time correcting back our Christian leaders who are occupying the pulpits, wherewith we find in today's Christendom nephews rather than pastors, or even as such the Levites who have to be there, or the Nazarites who have to sanctify themselves to serve in the temple of the Lord, but rather even the elders who have been occupying the pulpit, they are more worst than these nephews, wherewith they think they can organize the pulpit worship order, and they think they are the person who are going to direct that this is the message the pastor is going to preach today, and this is the person who is going to do the other activities, which is so wrong and which is so not at all in accord with Bible doctrine as with the mind of Christ, but rather they are as per ruling, and even as such, the apostate leaders who have been occupied with the pulpit, who doesn't have that authority given to them, bear with the pastoral pain they have to go through, suffering for my Lord, getting into Bible doctrine, shedding the word of truth, giving top priority for the word, they have to correct this church from the original languages of the scripture, studying to the fact, exegeomai being the order of the pulpit, when exegeomai has been taken as a case of the order of the full pit, there is no one who can come even to think or dare enough even to have a thought what is going to be the order of the pulpit when they want to change it, either it is a committee or it is the founder or it is the president of the church, because there can be no founder, there can be no director, there can be no president for the church except the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord being ordained and kept by the bona fide gift given by the head of the church, wherewith he can control the church, wherewith he directs the paths of the church, wherein he takes the responsibility for each and every moron believer, even as such the genius virtue believer in the word of the Lord, and tells to them, this is what your responsibility is, and this is what your goal is, and this is what your life is, so that my duty for you all is to make you perfect and complete, so that I could, I, so that I am answerable tomorrow at the judgment seat of Christ, for which, for, for which and what purpose, what were the decisions that went wrong, and why this person was not grown up to maximum glorification, and to Christ, and turning out to become an invisible hero, or a maximum glorification believer in the sight of the Lord. And this responsibility, since it is, will be kept upon the shoulder of a pastor teacher, it is no way that the committee should interfere in his work. It is no way that the committee should try to organize those things wherewith he can change. When these are the things like the names who are more worse than those slaves, who are not even circumcised in their flesh, or not even circumcised in their hearts to come and serve into the Lord, then to Lord graciously gave them the opportunity so that they could change their attitude so that they can change according to the word of the Lord and be as a fellow slaves to those Nazarites or fellow slaves to those Levites who have been serving there and be their help rather than to become a hurdle. But in today's pulpit, what is happening? The more worst people than these Nathanims who are not even circumcised in their heart, who do not even have the fear of the Lord, they think they can go and offer offerings unto the pulpit more, more, more sincerely than those Levites whom the Lord has rejected. This is what it is happening in today's pulpit and if such kind of uh, names or shenanigans who are occupying the pulpit are coming to handle the word of the truth or the person who does not even know whether his call has been given by the spiritual gift of a pastor teacher to him or who doesn't even know what is his work and why is the purpose for him to survive in this church because has been told to Ezra as per the wisdom given to the given by Lord unto you to by that astrologer's king he says you direct your men and you direct the, their elders to the church so that they can easily continue these things even after you are dead. That is what we have to do. A man who is already skillful, or a man who is already scribe, or a man who is skillful in the word of the Lord, the man who has been prepared, or been committed, is hard to learn the word of the Lord, and to teach the word of the Lord, is a man who is capable of handling the pulpit there. But the problem in today's Christendom is, we have 
we do not have so much of men who are quite sure of handling this word of truth through exegomai or categorical or isagogical background of the subject. We have such kind of a man in today's pulpit who do not even know the origin of their nature, why they are coming and occupying the pulpit. Even as such, the reason are being many, but we are sorting out one by one, where with the importance of the fifth phrase at the same time answering to them, why is it? And after salvation, what is the purpose that Lord has given to us so that we are surviving in this pilgrimage under His grace, under His provision given to us so graciously, so freely? And what is the reason that we have been kept alive? And why is it that after even after our salvation, when salvation becomes an accomplished fact at the moment of faith alone in Christ alone, when we express our volition from dichotomous nature becoming to trichotomous in nature, what happens then? We are giving top priority for Bible doctrine. So until unless we give top priority for Bible doctrine, we are been not able to provide to go out of this world because after salvation you have been given a rational life. Then what? After salvation, what are you going to do in this world? That should be the question pondering in our thoughts. After salvation, the simplified answer is learn Bible doctrine. Change your old ways. Do not be known to your old man, but rather become a wife to the new husband, wherewith learning the word of the Lord under the controlling power ministry of the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, training up in his realm, being controlled of the Spirit, and not to be squelched or grieving the Spirit, but rather living in the divine dinosphere of Bible doctrine, learning the word, and being edified in that word, and giving them top priority for the Bible doctrine, and you, you are standing forth for the virtue wherewith you have been called and since you have been born again into this royal family of God what are you going to do you have to be first go to the level of expertized knowledge in exegesis along with categorical and along with along with isagogical subject of the preparation then what happens you will realize what is your spiritual gift and that spiritual gift making a differentiation between the pre-canon period and the post-canon period in the pre-canon period the spiritual gifts which are so differently used in today's apostate pulpits that they're called miracles or healings and he, this guy even calls himself that I have the power to give you deliverance from all such kind of a things because I've been on anointed by God. No way, no chance at all. Those anointing are being sent by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as apostolos are being seized after the completion of canon. In this post-canon period of the church age, there is no apostle, there is no prophet, even, in fact, even there is no need for Lord to show forth that sign of a miracle through this mediator, but rather Lord can show that miracle directly to the person who is in need of that when he humbly believes by only believing it by faith alone in Christ alone when he accepts it that is what it is going to happen to him and apart from that whatsoever through any mediator or any agency Lord is not going to entertain that in fact even John 20 31 is so straight in the word that these things are written that you might believe that Lord Jesus Christ is the son of God and that believing upon him that you might be saved and these things are the word of the Lord that has been written and kept for us and apart from that if they are performing any miracle are healings today it is not Lord Jesus Christ who is performing because he has given the ultimate authority to his word and his word alone that is what we have been sustaining here if his word is not been here and if his word is not been given to us then those miracles or healings will be still continuing. But after the completion of Canaan, canon, of, canon of Scripture, we being in the post-Canon period, we are not intended to lean upon these miracles or healings or tongues or X, Y, Z, or even making yourself as a jackass, calling apostle, making yourself like a jackass as prophet, and saying the prophecy is still existing. No way. Church change is an end for the period of prophecy. It is not a period for the prophecy fulfillment. Church change is a new period sandwiched between the first advent and second advent of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in this new dispensation of the church age wherewith every believer has been called as a new spiritual species, alekinekatesis and this new spiritual species is what you have been called for to tell if you have not been there to look into the privilege and the opportunity and the power of the divine dinosphere given to us so that we can rule over those things of this satan is nothing but rather even rule over these false imaginations wherewith such kind of a Zakir Nayak or Sheikh Hamadidat who are ruining their life, who are wasting their life, who are becoming just like an hypocritical believers, not able to understand the truth, not even able to recognize what is the sunlight which is more powerful. They think they can put a torch against the sunlight and they can read that is not powerful. All such kind of things we can easily wash out in this unique dispensation of the church age because we have the completed canon of scripture fully revealed for us, fully given to such an extent that we do not require any helping heads for us further apart from a right and faithful pastor teacher who is prepared, who is going to train you up, who is going to teach you up 
of the word of the truth, because of the paraclete of the divine mentor, which is given to each and every believer who controls and directs your path. When you are under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the confession of sins, through rebound, and in the grace provision, which is not a gimmick, which is not a pennant, which is not a tithe that are going to pay, or XYZ, it is only the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that is rebound, which is a grace provision. You come, you confess your sins directly to God the Father in the privacy of your priesthood, and you get back into fellowship, because His words are inexhaustible, directing to the minute details, even to the complex things. He has directed each and every path for us, only from the original languages of the Scripture, and that inspiration recognizes the original languages of the Scripture. It doesn't recognize any translation. Many of the people are occupying the pulpit who are not even able to, who are not even able to discern this simple truth are rising heretic to the core. And that's why they call church age is a period of prophecy and church age is XYZ. Church age is having the gift of knowledge as well. So they're considering themselves, this is a new revelation, what I'm going to give to you. But they're not able to understand, as told in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 18 and 19, there is nothing you can add to it, there is nothing you can take away from it. And the adding of your knowledge is waste. And the prophecy, what you're telling, is not at all a prophecy. It is a sheer out of blasphemy. Lord never called you for material prosperity. In fact, even for the divine imputed righteousness, which has been credited to your soul, to bless that divine imputed righteousness for God's integrity, Lord will bless you, even in time as well as in eternity. But Lord wants you to have the things perpetuated even for an eternal end. Even the minute things wherewith you do work, it should stand for an eternity work. Exactly the minute blessing what Lord is going to bless. He wants you to stand it for eternal glory. That's why he tells first you grow up in Bible doctrine. When a believer is growing up in Bible doctrine, his escrow contract is made perfect sure. And as he grows up to the stages of this escrow contract, number one, the spiritual adulthood, wherewith in that stage he goes for spiritual self-esteem. And in that number two, spiritual autonomy. And in the final stage, spiritual autonomy maturity when he's passing down for all the stages when he passes down all these things then he's going to get the final stage which is known as maximum glorification unto Christ and for this is what you have been kept alive and for this is what you have been called for and if you fail to recognize all these things and if you think that okay without reaching spiritual autonomy without reaching spiritual maturity Lord will bless me I'm having such kind of a material material blessing so my physical property has been pros prosper prosperized to the maximum so I'm happy so Lord is giving me deliverance no way no chance at all it is Satan who is hiding you from the truth and not able to give you Bible doctrine so that it makes you to prosper so that you think when you go to such kind of a minister you have been blessed because Lord will in return bless you for the divine imputed righteousness which is there for you through the grace pipeline but Lord is not going to bless you because of your tithes Lord is not going to bless you because of your XYZ activities of your moral things where with your you're performing no way no chance at all the blessing of the Lord and his phenomena of spiritual realm is totally different you cannot comprehend with your finite mind those infinite things the finite mind can only think if you are right with your fellow man if you are right with your Lord with your cunning activities that is what Lord is going to bless you you think Lord is a bribe taker that you pay him your 10% of your tithe which they call tithe but I call it as a bribe that Lord is going to bless you by your bribe no way, no chance at all. Do not play gimmicks with my Lord. Lord doesn't require your money. What money do you think that you can pay? And Lord is going to bless you. No way, no chance at all. Satan may prosper you for a few times so that it can totally ruin you out even your foundation wherewith Lord has put you so that that foundation, though it cannot break, it says that you are building your house, but that building of your house is in your dream. As such, you are drinking and eating in your dream. So is that house that you are building. And this man failed to understand this simple logic of Bible doctrine. And they think today they have given to this pastor money, so they have been blessed. They think they have given to that pastor the money, so he has been blessed. They think they have been given XYZ to those activities through tithes or XYZ of all the sure out of moral things where they think they have been blessed. No way, no chance at all, dear brethren. Make it 200% sure for your thought. It is the grace pipeline for the divine imputed righteousness. To honor that righteousness, Lord is going to bless you if you are till to the spiritual moron. But if you are going to spiritual maturity, Lord will bless you as you pass down 
in the stages of your spiritual maturity. And these are the things wherewith we have to make and ponder over again and again. Until and unless we could get back to those things, we cannot get anything apart. And that is a failure on the part of the believers on many in today's Christian realm, that they are giving top priority to these false blessings and false prosperity gospels and false revival meetings. And they are considering they have been revived, they have been strengthened, they have been getting money. No way, no chance at all. Money is nothing to do with the blessing of the Lord. Lord blesses you in the spiritual realm, the heavenlies, wherewith that blessing will give for you money in the eternity, not now. And that money is what you become as a winner, believer in the sight of the Lord, an invisible hero, and the impact of the angelic realm, that angels also crave to salute you when you are walking because of the thing that you have done for the Lord on this earth. And that is what Lord requires, and that cannot be done until and unless you grow up in Bible doctrine. And in today's Christian, the so-called nethinims you are occupying the pulpit who falsely say that they have been blessed and they have been blessing other people and they are having the anointing so they are doing it no way no chance at all they do not even have once a time of experience in their life to bow down in the knees and preach or bow down in the knees and read bible bow down in the knees and write bible these people they are not even having that humbleness towards the lord far less they think they are doing those great things in the sight of the lord so that lord is blessing them no way no chance at all lord has been told for us in many times in the bible the new subject on your knees that is your complete subjection of humility towards the Lord bear with you cry for you so that you crave for that relationship of a true one not cry not emotional you crave that is you zeal you have the desire Lord show me your right and true fellowship when Lord shows that right and true fellowship top priority for you will be the directing of the Lord to learn exact Bible doctrine, exegetical Bible doctrine, isagogical back, background of Bible doctrine, and categorical study of Bible doctrine. And the way you mature under the controlling power, ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, if preferable if it is possible for you on the knees, the way of your growth is so rapid that even men of the past or in the future will totally be getting shocked for the maturity what you have at the age where you are not ought to have that. And that is what Lord has planned and has given for each and every believer because of the blessed hope and the capacity and the title and the virtueness wherewith you have been called the title which you have been given because furnished by the saving work of Lord Jesus Christ on the cross is, is your thing and the capacity will be furnished by the indwelling controlling ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and your virtue will be founded upon learning and exhibiting that Bible doctrine taught in the school of grace and our right pastor teacher so the Lord may work in us that which is pleasing in His sight and bring out in all our ways a more faithful exhibition of the divine life. The language with which our scripture closes is eminently calculated to awaken in our souls the most intense desire after these things. Indeed, I cannot conclude this, this, this speech without quoting this noble passage at full length, praying under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to apply in it much power to the heart and conscience of both the listener and to the one who is telling. For the grace of our Lord which brings salvation unto all men hath appeared, teaching us that we have to deny ungodliness and worldly, and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. What a prize, what objects, that he might redeem us from all the iniquity and purify unto himself a people of possession, zealous of good works. And that is what we, the pastors, also ought to note, deny ungodliness and this worldly lusts. The more you are into this godly, into this ungodliness of your nature, the more you are nethinims, the more you are not having that authority to be established in the pulpit by teaching of the word of the Lord, then the committee will definitely control you. And the more you fail to have your objective upon this zealous of good works, where the Lord has called to us and show forth the divine exhibition of your life. Your divine life is an exhibition not only to this world, even to the angels where they have been ob constantly observing you, which way you are going. So the more you are out of this exhibition for the divine life, the way you are being more unqualified or disqualified by running against the rules of the race, the more you are getting a dethroned to my Lord. Because for the title which has been furnished unto you, because of a title that has been called as a sainthood at the moment of salvation for you, the title will be used false and the capacity wherewith Lord God the Holy Spirit has given this sort of a divine power for us looking looking unto Jesus under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit we, are, we, be, we being ought to run the race we are losing it and even as such the third and moral condition wherewith we have been called for showing forth the virtue of integrity in our hearts the 
until we are becoming a failures not to show forth that integrity in our hearts. And any preacher who is occupying the pulpit, it is a so great of a disturbance for him if he is not establishing the authority of the pulpit through his preaching of the word. The more he fails, the more he has been out to the grace of the Lord. And the more he is out to the grace of the Lord, the more the church committee will try to control him. And the more the church committee tries to control him, the more he is becoming a failure in the sight to establish that bona fide gift given to him by the head of the church. In fact, even I doubt whether this bona fide gift, what they are enjoying, is it in the bona fide gift of the nature of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or not? Are these people really the priests like those Zadakites or not? Or these people are just like those who the Nathanims, though being uncircumcised in the flesh came into the church came into the temple only to help those levites for their ceremonial work but this Nathanims are never been called as a pastors but in today's pulpit i think the apostate pastors who have been calling themselves as pastors i call them as Nathanims because they do not even have the source how to handle the word of the lord as told even by the jeremiah the prophet in the book of jeremiah the people who do not know the law are handling me Exactly the people who do not know the exigio of my order of the pulpit for the government of the word of the Lord are coming and trying to handle the word of the truth. As per these people are totally out of their mind and they are totally out of their thoughts. And these men are coming to handle this word. And these men they are handling that word in a way wherewith they are not able to realize and not able to understand what exactly is the power of my Lord given to those each and every pastor teacher if he's a bona fide gift. It is not man we please, but it is rather Lord we are here to please him. And these men are a failure, and these men are the one who are going for the debates, and the people who have been trained up under such kind of a man are also coming to the pulpit. And they are these are the people who are getting blasphemy to the maximum. In fact, even if you look the other end of the people, they are the men known as faith healers who are apostate to the core, who are charismatic to the core, and they are thinking to themselves what they're doing is right and what they're doing is absolutely great. But all those things in the sight of the Lord are shiarat, dear brethren. Lord doesn't have any pleasing for your thoughts, for your understanding, for your ways. Lord wants only his mind or his Holy Spirit to be shown forth in our lives. As such, he's been really shown forth only through the learning of Bible doctrine. The more you neglect the more you reject the more you are answerable to the Lord why you have failed to exegete the word in the pulpit because of the obtuseness of your own inner volition not to give top priority for exegesis or because of your own obtuseness for the nature of this people who have been hardened spiritually and virtually and even as such morally to the chief which way you go, which way you choose, dear pastor, that is left to you. But it has been our duty to answer back, to tell to Zakir Naik and Sheikh Ahmad Didad, because of the failure of the fifth phrase, I thirst, wherewith Lord has told, the fifth phrase, to fulfillment of the scripture of the passage in Psalm 69, 21. Many of the people who are coming today to the pulpits are also not able to even understand what is to not diminish a word. Even as such, what is, it is to fulfill each and every word of Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 by preaching from the original languages of the scripture. When Lord has not been diminishing even a scripture of his passage when he was telling to them exactly the quotes, when he said, I thirst, telling to us, centering his entire humanity upon Bible doctrine so that it is the desire of God the Father on each and every part of the believer. They also should have that same joy, reverence, absorption towards the truth and come back and understand that truth and apply into our hearts so that we, being pilgrimage in this trip, what is our top priority and top, and, and top privilege, that we also should learn simple answer Bible doctrine. And that's the being failure on the pulpit of that time if Lord would have been failed, that is what we are failing today. But Lord didn't fail. And he said, follow me. Exactly those things we have to do today. We have to follow each and every word which he has told. And we have to make 
and prepare and ready each and every believer into the sight of the Lord by not diminishing even a single of his word. But the failure on part of the pastor teacher, that is what I doubt whether he is really a pastor teacher or he is a metonym who is uncircumcised in the flesh entered into the temple. But this man uncircumcised to the heart, uncircumcised to their life, entering to the pulpits and trying to preach the word and handle the word as the committee directs. And as long as these people who are there in the pulpit how they can make the congregation to conform to the image of Christ. Each and every believer, bear with union with Christ at the moment of faith in Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our current positional truth, the church age believer, life should be headed by Lord and, Jesus, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in its retroactive position. Many of the people fail to understand this experiential sanctification which we have been covering, which is so absolute and progressive aspects as such as you survive in this world, so such is your experiential sanctification to survive. If your failure to get sanctified each and every day, cleansing thoroughly with the word of the Lord, you are being a failure. I sometimes doubt whether I am giving a lot of speculation towards these pastor teachers and telling them what is this, what is that. Maybe I think these people will never change, though I am telling to them directly on the face, teach exegesis, teach isagogic, teach categorization in the pulpits, then too they are not able to correct that. I think it is better for me to change the things of them and correct myself more in depth in the word of the Lord so that I could become perfect example for these people. At the same time, those who are hearing to this step because I should be answerable to the Lord whether I'm told or not. What I tell if they are the people who are listening to my tapes, it's well and good. Let them follow the paths where they have been followed, directed by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But this man who are failure, not able to follow those things, I am not not here to speculate them or criticize them or tell them that you are doing such and such wrong, such and such moron, but rather the pain of my heart for the blasphemy they have done. What I do, I have given them maximum information and even I'll be giving them much as information as I could tell because it is my duty to snatch as many as people who are falling into that false system of teaching, but rather tell them to exegete, my, to exegete the word in the pulpits so that that could be the finest and their lifetime goal to be achieved so that believing upon the Lord and working with love, not able to be under the fear of divine anathema and maranatha, but rather being as a believer of an unprofitable slave, need not to be ashamed as a workman, accurately handle the word of the truth, and done that which was his duty to do. For that we have been calling forth. And if the people fail to understand this, then they really fail in the debate of Zakir Naik. And when they really fail the debate in the of Zakir Naik, what they're having, they're having nothing but sheer rot. The more they fail, the more they ignore. The more they ignore, the more they are gone. And that is what they are gone into their own destruction. So yesterday we were covering the tape considering about the dispensation. And today we shall look for the exemplification of that same uniqueness of the church age, experiential scientification, and why it is that we are having misconceptions about the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In a review to this, we shall have a word of prayer and come and look into the subject. We are grateful, Heavenly Father, for the privilege that are given to us to have fellowship with you through the word. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us the things that are going to study, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. In yesterday's tape, as we are continuing about the dispensations, the uniqueness of the church age, we were looking how to be conformed to the image of Christ. And that confirmation to the image of Christ is what Lord does at the moment of salvation. But second to that, what we are having, we are having the experiential sanctification. And then the, what the third one we are having, we are having the ultimate sanctification. So in the second sanctification status quo of us, we are being here told to them how well it is that we are to give top priority for Bible doctrine. Experiential sanctification is residence function and spiritual momentum in the divine dinosphere during the believer's life on this earth. Living in the divine dinosphere which the which Lord God the Holy Spirit directs, that is what the capacity for us to be done will be fulfilled by the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And apart from it we do not have any other thing. So with the Holy Spirit which energizes us 
fulfills the protocol plan of God as told in John 17, 17, 2 Timothy 2, 21, Hebrews 9, 13, 14. That's why the Lord has told how you shall sanctify them. They shall be sanctified by your word, by your truth. Sanctify means what? Set apart. And this sanctification is what? They are in st three status. Number one, positional sanctification. Number two, experiential sanctification. And number, th and number three, ultimate sanctification. Positionally, you have been sanctified. Even the chief angel, Satan, is under you so that your sanctification should be greater than the Satan. But in today's people, the things that are happening in the believer's realm is that they are really fearing and worrying about Satan and say that Satan is behind me, Satan is troubling me, Satan is ruining me, Satan is setting me a trap or X, Y, Z. Satan cannot do anything until and unless you give your volition to that desire. The more you give your volition to such kind of a useless things of this world, to the lust pattern, as been told in the Proverbs 29 chapter, verses 12th verse, if you are subjecting, if you are as a ruler, hearing to lying words, then your followers are also wicked men. That is what exactly the thing of Jonah chapter 2 verse 7 and 8, it says very clearly, those who forsake the mercies of the Lord are going to absorb lying vanities. Or in the word it says, if you observe the lying vanities, you are going to forsake the mercy of the Lord. That is what exactly the truth that is happening in today's Christendom. The people that are there here, they are absorbing lying vanities and they are forsaking how to be under the mercies of the Lord. The same thing in John 17, 17, when my Lord has told to them, experiential sanctification could be done only by what? By truth. And if the truth is not from the original languages of the scripture, then there is no sanctification. And when the truth is not being taught to such kind of a morons who are dichotomous in nature, who are not able to understand the simple gospel, far less they think they have understood the Bible, far less they think they have put a torch against the water, against the sunlight, and they are able to understand. But these people, they are not able to realize as water cannot rise its level so these people cannot rise from the position of their spiritual death they have to be born again they think they are deep they are above the water they are rising above the water but as the water stands still it cannot rise the level wherewith it will be there if you could see for a long time exactly this man as the people who have been fallen like this Cain, we can see the birth in the image of God. That's what Adam was been made, but he was sinless. But when he sinned, he had his son known as Cain. But Cain was a man who has been sinned in the sight of the Lord, and he was a fallen nature. Exactly each and every believer, at, or each and every member of the human race, at the moment of salvation through faith alone in Christ alone, is a fallen believer. And this is what will be transferred from that fallen nature to that believing aspect of trichotomy. That is what exactly we have been told in the book of John chapter 3, verses 3 to 5, to be born again. This trichotomy, this dichotomy nature can never understand what is to be born again until and unless he believes upon the Lord and Savior as his Savior. Until and unless he can understand that, how we can preach, how we can come, and if we can tell that I have understood the Bible, and I am telling to you all, Lord Jesus Christ was not resurrected, Lord Jesus Christ was not crucified, Lord Jesus Christ is not divine. That's what he says, but we know very well he is dichotomous, and we being not prepared is a failure on our part to answer such kind of a unruly evil. So what you are going to do, our experiential sanctification, how we are going to be sanctified with the truth, the truth to be taught from the original languages of the scripture as told in John 17, 17. If you have not been sanctified in the truth, no matter whatever you are doing, it is just like a lie. As told in Proverbs 38th chapter verse 6, if the words are not from above, if the words are not in truth or not out of Bible doctrine, then what you are speaking is a lie. And when the preacher is not exegeting from the pulpit, whatsoever is taking care of the pulpit is a lie. Apart from exegesis, apart from preaching from the original language of the scripture, if you are as a preacher, if you are handling your pulpit, take it for sure, it is a true hundred percent lie. And Lord didn't pray, sanctify them for the translations that have been given. No. Lord said, sanctify them. By what? By the truth. And where is the truth? The divine inspiration of the scripture is from the original languages of the word. And that is what it is, experiential sanctification. And that sanctification you can never have until unless you wash your life in the Bible doctrine. Until unless you have been prepared in the Bible doctrine, you cannot go for such kind of a debates. Until unless you know what is your life in the word of the Lord, you cannot go and stand for those kind of a debates. And when you fail, you blaspheme me, my Lord. Because you have not been prepared, because you have not been faithful. 
At the same time, the same things are running in today's pulpit as well. The pastor teachers who have been occupying the pulpit are these members who are not able to understand what is the truth. Are these members who are not able to realize what priority to be given for biblical truth. And these members, they're training weekly ones. And they're calling themselves, they're doing the work of the Lord. But they call themselves, they are not even worth to be called as names. Far less they call, they are like the priests and handling the word of truth. And that is a sure art of their blasphemy to their life. So, experiential sanctification is a residence, function, and spiritual momentum in the divine dynosphere. During the believer's life on earth, living in the divine dynosphere, which will be energized or which will be kept, the capacity given for us to run, will be given by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who indwells in you. And if you are another controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, He teaches to you sound doctrine. Living in the dynosphere, energized by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, fulfills the protocol plan of God wherewith you have been called. Because we are in union with Christ, we now are able to be sustained, nourished, and empowered by the post-salvation ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because of John 7, 37 through 39, John 14, 15 through 17, and John 16, 13 through 14. Thus we become partakers of the divine nature in experience, just as we are in position as told in 2 Peter 1, 4. Lord God, the Holy Spirit's post-salvation ministry is called the filling of the Spirit as told in Ephesians 5, 18b, or the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which enables us to walk by the means of the Spirit as told in Galatians 5, 16, in a manner which is worthy of our station of life to be which we have been called, as told in Ephesians 4, 1. United with Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and granted the same power system in which His humanity constantly lived, we are equipped to be ministers of God and to walk just as Christ walked, as told in Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, and Galatians 5, 16, as followed with 1 John 2, 6. He functioned in the prototype divine dynosphere. We can function in the operational type divine dynosphere, as told in John 14, 11 to 12. In the divine dynosphere, we live through the Spirit by faith. What is believed is known, Bible doctrine, as told in Galatians 5, 5. The mind of Christ, or Bible doctrine in the soul, is the material the Spirit uses to manufacture the virtues of Christ in our lives, as told in Romans 13, 14. In a different metaphor, doctrine is the nutrient that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, uses to produce the fruit of the Spirit, which is known as the fruit of the Spirit. So doctrine is the nutrient that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, uses in us to produce that fruit of the Spirit. Therefore, experiential sanctification has both absolute and progressive aspects. The filling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is an absolute permanent status quo. But when we sin, it becomes a temporary one. But the indwelling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is a permanent status quo. Lord God, the Holy Spirit, indwells in us, but the filling is a temporary realm. When you sin, you are been out. That's why you have this progressive condition, wherewith you have your level of spiritual growth. Either you will be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or you will be under the sin nature. And that is your absolute status quo. But the permanent status quo is what Lord God, the Holy Spirit, always indwells. Either you grieve Him or squelch Him. That's why when we are grieving or squelching Him, we have been given the mandate not to do like that, but rather be under the controlling power ministry. Because if you do like that, you will be having a suffering for you at your life. At any given time, the believer is either 100% controlled with the Spirit or he is not been filled with the Spirit at all. That is what it says when we sin, we are out of fellowship. Either he is in the fellowship with God or he is out of fellowship. If he has confessed his sins to God the Father, the believer is entirely inside the divine dynasty as told in 1 John 1 9. But when he sins, and as long as he does not confess to God, he is entirely outside the divine dynosphere. Outside the divine dynosphere, he grieves or squelches, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as told in Ephesians 4.30, 1 Thessalonians 5.19, and resides inside, instead in Satan's cosmic system. This absolute but invisible status, in or out, has a cumulative effect, which is in progressive aspect of experiential sanctification. The power of the divine, divine dynosphere is essential for spiritual growth. Only in the divine dynosphere can the believer learn Bible doctrine or accurately apply spiritual truth. What is the dominant trend of these decisions at any given time? Has he been consistently obedient to God's mandates that compromise the divine dynosphere, or has he neglected these divine commands? Is he more often in or out of fellowship with God? Spiritual growth comes from consistency, and as a believer grows, this consistently 
this consistency in executing God's protocol plan becomes a stronger and stronger impetus in his life. Every day he learns and applies doctrine. His inner person is renewed day by day, as told in 2 Corinthians 4.16. His thinking is renovated according to the pattern of divine thinking in Bible doctrine, as told in Romans 12.2 and Ephesians 4.23. He gradually acquires the virtues of Christ as growth continues controlling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit produces more of the fruit of the Spirit whenever the believer is in divine dinosphere. If the believer is not in divine dinosphere and he lives and resides in the cosmic dinosphere, then he is not growing up, but rather he has been standing still. And there is no place of standing still, but rather he retards. Therefore, we have been given. We have to learn more what we forget less, because the rate of learning should always exceed the rate of forgetting. For example, a believer can be just as filled with the Spirit as the mature believer, the one who is a novice believer. But the mature believer understands a great deal more Bible doctrine. When the mature Christian is controlled by the Spirit, he manifests the newness of life more than the beginner, who equally is filled with the Spirit but understands less doctrine. So, when the mature believer being under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he manifests the newness of life more than the beginner who equally is controlled with the spirit but understands less doctrine. A greater understanding and application of doctrine in the believer's thinking causes greater manifestations of the controlling of the spirit in the believer's life. And to this, we have the fact that has to be added as a Christian grows, he spends greater portion of his time controlled with the Spirit. In other words, both quantity and quality improve. More time is spent in the divine dinosphere with a greater depth of doctrinal resources for the Spirit to use. This explains the increasing effect of divine dynamics within a Christian's life. Experiential sanctification, what is termed, is termed as godliness, as told in 1 Timothy 3.16, 4, 7 through 8, and 2 Peter 1 through 8, and 3.11. This godliness is termed as use buyer. True godliness runs after runs far deeper than the shallow legalisms that so many Christians practice. Genuine godliness is abiding in the sphere of Christ's love, which equated with obedience to his commandments as told in John 15.10 and Ephesians 5.2. The sphere of Christ's love is a divine dinosphere. The commandments of the Christian way of life call us as one consistent system, a single complex of interrelated and mutually supporting elements, an integrated sphere of divine dinosphere. This divine system of love and power is the place of godliness. The Christian way of life is life in the divine dinosphere. Here in principle is the answer to the question, after salvation, what? After salvation, spend maximum time to learn Bible doctrine in the divine dinosphere. Experiential sanctification is potential for the believer, commanded but not guaranteed. God provides the resources, opportunities, instructions, encouragement, and even the divine discipline. But the believer himself chooses to execute the protocol plan of God or not. Volition remains a central issue in the church age, as in every dispensational throughout the angelic conflict. But God's faithfulness is also a consistent theme. The believer's failure to live by the mandates of experiential sanctification never cancels positional or ultimate sanctification, which are guaranteed by the very essence of God. After our post-salvation lives on earth have ended, God will achieve our ultimate sanctification of the resurrection or rapture of the church. In that future moment, He will provide the resurrection body, making us physically like Christ, as told in 1 Corinthians 1 8, Ephesians 1 4, Philippians 3 21, and 1 Thessalonians 5 23, followed by 1 John 3 2. And what are the misconceptions of the baptism of the Spirit, wherein they fail? What is filling of the Spirit, wherein they fail to understand what is the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit? But we are here to tell to them what are the misconceptions of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The doctrine of the baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit is widely distorted today. We must state what the baptism of the Spirit is not so that the people can understand what is the baptism of the Spirit. The baptism of the Spirit is not the same as the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or the filling of the Spirit. As just, as just we have noted, the baptism of the Holy Spirit also is not an experience or, the, or a second work of grace after salvation. It is not and never was speaking in tongues or doing performing or miracles or XYZ. The idea that Spirit baptism involves speaking in tongues fails to distinguish the baptism of the doctrine of the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, from the doctrine of spiritual gifts. The baptism of the Spirit occurs at the instant of salvation for all church age believers. The gift of tongues formerly operated only in the post-salvation experience of a few first century Christians before the completion of the canon was. The phenomenon of tongues was a temporary spiritual gift designed as Isaiah prophesied to warn Israel of impending national judgment as told in Isaiah 28:11 and 1 Corinthians 14, 21-22. 
A. Jews were evangelized in Gentile languages understood by the listeners, but not the speakers. This ironic gift exercised by certain early Christians dramatized the Jews' failure to evangelize the Gentiles. Because the gift of tongues was a miraculous sign to alert Israel to her descendants, no one has legitimately spoken in tongues since AD 70. When Jerusalem fell, the Jews were dispersed and the purpose for this temporary gift expired. As told, if their tongues they will cease in 1 Corinthians 13.8. The dramatic gift of tongues ceased long ago, but the baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit occurs in every church, every generation of the church age. And never does this instantaneous work of the Spirit involve aesthetics or emotion. Indeed, the baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit has absolutely no relation to feelings. The believer may be elated or feel nothing at the moment of salvation. He may even feel horrible, but regardless of how he feels, in that initial instant of faith alone in Christ alone, the Holy Spirit unites him with Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this is the point where with many legalists or emotional crowd or static crowd are standing and doing their work and calling to themselves that they are being filled with the Spirit or baptized with the Spirit only when they speak in tongues. But that is a sheer sure art of blasphemy and it is a sheer sure art of a lie. No one senses or detects the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in any way. It is neither sight, hearing, smelling, taste, nor touch confirms this doctrine, nor does any so-called sixth sense or intuition. The Spirit's ministry of the salvation is known only through Bible doctrine, which the believer learns after salvation. And this is what people fail because of substituting to learn Bible doctrine and to know what is that after salvation. These people are substituting emotion. The baptism of the Spirit is never earned nor deserved by the believer. God gives this fabulous gift by grace, totally without regard for human merit or human works. Union with Christ is complete at the instant of salvation, accomplished entirely by the grace of God, before any believer has a chance to achieve spiritual growth, perform any Christian service, or even learn about those things. The baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is not progressive and cannot be improved. Furthermore, this instantaneous work of God, the Holy Spirit, for every church age believer is permanent. Never in all eternity can it be undone, lost or cancelled, and never does it need to be repeated as told in Romans 8, 38 through 39. When we are having so many problems in our Christendom, many of the believers not able to understand the difference of Lord God, the Holy Spirit ministry, and the controlling power ministry, or the filling of the ministry, wherewith they think filling is speaking in tongues, or where they are not able to realize what is that, what is emotion, nothing to do with this ministry. These people, they are only battling around themselves with Pentecostal and denominations and XYZ, and this unruly, reckless, senseless, extravagant idiot comes and tells to us, through this Zakir Naik, the Satan, saying to that, Lord was not been crucified. What a sheer out of a lie. When we are correcting ourselves in these things, when we are having a thorough knowledge about the baptism of the Spirit, and what is baptism of the Spirit, and what is not baptism of the Spirit, and why it is absolute status quo, which is permanent realm, and why is it filling of the Spirit is a temporary status quo? Because when we sin, we are out of the fellowship. And when we confess our sins, when we, when we are getting back, once again through confession of our sins, we are in fellowship. All these things, even the so-called great scholars who are writing the books through the denomination heads of Pentecostal charismatic movement or legalistical heads even through Baptists who are running around today are not able to discern this simple truths of such of baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit far less they think they can rise preachers who can accurately handle this truth and this has become a failure on part of so many people in today's Christendom far less Zakir Naik will come and tell to us that Lord was not been crucified and he has understood from the Bible that Lord was not been crucified and Christians are fictionized or crucifixed and this is a sure out of a lie and a blasphemy not only to those Muslims who are there to obey the law of the fifth of the second law to honor of the third phrase. Lord Jesus Christ, though being dying on the cross, he gave those things completely subjected to Apostle John to take care of his of, of his mother. Exactly what we have to do. If you Muslims truly believe upon your father Abraham, then it is your duty to believe and to honor his God to whom Abraham believed and was been saved. And that's why we have been having that paradise known as Abraham's bosom. And this paradise of Abraham's bosom is what has been termed, is evacuated, has been crunched out at the resurrection of my Lord, marching ahead into the heaven, taking down and clearing, the, releasing the captivity captive, and which is, a, which is a, another next doctrine many people fail to understand these truths as well. Because since they fail to understand dispensations, they have so many errors not to understand Bible doctrine. Whether they listen to my words or not, it's, it's not my thing to worry. It's my duty to tell them the truth. The truth shall set them free, because tomorrow I'm answerable to my Lord. And these tapes I've been recording and keeping. To whomsoever Lord seems fit, he's going to send it.
but it is your work to be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and make sure there is nothing experienced for you to have the baptism of the Spirit at the moment of salvation. Lord does it, and you realize that only when you are growing up in the word of the truth. And what is it that we have been answering to each and every pastor teacher who is occupying the pulpit? Bharat, they are telling what is his life without exegesis and what is the source of that exegesis if it is not the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, recorded and kept for us in John 1.18 to exegio my. And what are its characteristics? The characteristics is to be like a faithful, prepared servant, needs not to be ashamed. And what is its issue? The issue of it is Christian virtue and Lord's glory of maximum glorification. And in return for the believers, what is the life which as a Christian you are possessing? What is its source if it is not Bible doctrine? What are its characteristics if it is not the fruit of the Spirit in your lives? And what is its issue if you are not having that volition to learn Bible doctrine? And for the unbelievers, what is life without Christ in you? What is that you are going to possess? You think your vain show, your vain discuted, or your heaping up in your vain thoughts is what you are going to show and that is the possession for you? No way, no chance at all. If there is no Christ in you, you do not have anything to show. And what is its source if there is no Christ? The source for you to know that Christ is to know that gospel, to believe upon the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what are the characteristics? Those characteristics are not been followed by such kind of a baptisms or XYZ, but these characteristics are easily followed only by faith alone, in Christ alone. And what is its issue? The issue is concerning the eternal life or your eternal death. Your attitude towards Lord and Savior Jesus Christ hangs and rests around your eternal destiny. Which way you go, dear brethren, of Zachary and Ike is left to you, but it has been a plea for us. The divine word speaks to us in two distinct head of sources. It speaks to us as a first man and it speaks to us as a second man. The first man being your physically born again person who has been spiritually dead, not able to understand the divine word and this person who has been spiritually dead can never even understand what is a simple gospel until and unless an evangelist speaks to him what is that gospel and the second person when he can understand that gospel is when he becomes trichotomous in nature when he has known the truth the truth shall set him free exactly for the believer the first man though you have been known lord and savior through that first man of your old sin nature you have to be dead to that first man what the divine word speaks but to the second man you have to be alive that is what are the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit who is your second husband or who is your first husband the first man being your ex-boyfriend but the, but, the, but the second man being your present husband you have to be faithful to him in learning the word of the truth and for the pastor teachers what is the first man the first man is your ignorance that you follow translations rather than exegomai and what should be your second man which the divine word speaks to us that should be exegesis to be established on the government rule of Bible doctrine and if these two sources, if you are not able to understand, which the divine word speaks to us so greatly, so admonishly to tell to you, good top priority for biblical truth. Learn the word of the Lord from the original language of the scriptures. You may pass down week by week, month by month, year by year. And if there is no foundation of exegesis in your pulpit, and if there is no foundation for categorical study or isagogical preparation of the subject and part of the pastor teacher, wherewith your duty is not to serve two masters, wherewith you hate the one and you reject the other. That is what exactly is going to happen to your pastor teacher. Your duty to, is to serve the Lord with exegesis alone. And if you follow gimmicks by serving the Lord with not exegesis, then you are serving the second master. That is, you are serving the fulfillment of your lust, where with the pride of life, lust of eye and lust of flesh is the top priority for such man, where with he doesn't sit and read, where with he doesn't know what is the devotedness to become a devoted believer to the sight of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the book of Acts, when the time they were having a quarrel at the table, they said, do you think we are here to serve tables rather than the word of the Lord and pray ourselves towards towards Lord's work? But who they were chosen? They were chosen only those men who were devoted. They didn't choose like this faithless, reckless, nothing names. But they choose only those devoted men who were born slave unto Christ. Even the pulpit ministry today, if you are occupying, you will be devoted only, if you will be taken into consideration only if you are a devoted person to Bible doctrine, and if you are here only to learn Bible doctrine. And if you as a pastor teacher not been prepared, not been devoted, 
make sure Lord will never use you. And you are answerable to the first man or to the first word and even to the second word. The first word being your physical birth and the second word being your spiritual birth. And now, though you are in the flesh, you knew the Lord. And henceforth, you do not know the flesh so that you should know more depth for the Lord. Being 100% under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, how you take it, that is left to you. And even as such for the believer, if you do not love the Lord with the same love which the Lord has given to you, then you will be called for divine anathema and maranatha. Even as such, it is for the pastor teacher who would not love to exegete the word. And for the unbeliever, though the grace of our Lord shines out so greatly, the capacity given to us to be energized in the power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the title given to us as a sainthood when we believe upon the Lord, and the moral or the spiritual condition given to us to grow up for maximum glorification by believing, converting from dichotomous to trichotomous in nature. And this Zachariah was not able to do that, even as so many religion heads are not able to do that. It is our duty to tell to you, live out your first nature of your dichotomy, come to the second nature, which is trichotomous in nature, so that this trichotomy can help you to understand the word, can help you to understand Bible doctrine, can help you to understand a le to, to, to lead a life which is worthy and glory for Lord's glorification because what is your source? What is your life without Christ in you? And these things we shall continue tomorrow because the wind is blowing too hard. The words will be recorded with disturbance. So I'll stop this tape today, here, and tomorrow we shall look in depth for the consideration of the work of the ten characteristics given to us in the uniqueness of the church age. Since we have been reviewed about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we shall look into depth of that subject in detail in a review and give that in tomorrow's tape for the people who are positive believers to learn the word of truth. That's what I can call. And even positive pastor teachers who are here to take them the notes and learn from the preachings that we are going to give, which has been advised by Lord God the Holy Spirit to commit to you. But these last movements have been dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life, wherewith they think they don't have life, wherein they think they are without hope, wherein they are, they are not able to understand what is their status quo without Christ in them. We are telling to them as well, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ by a simple act of faith. You shall have eternal life. The more you neglect this truth, the more you are making sure yourself and making a way secure for your eternal hell. Because the chemistry being the same for the charcoal as well as to the diamond, which way you take, dear brother, on that is left to you. But it's my duty to tell to you all, the charcoal also has the same issue known as volition. The diamond also has the same issue known as volition. Being these both volition issues controlled by that person of the charge of the chemistry, the chemistry being the divine immortal soul, and which way you take, dear brethren, that is left to you. If that divine immortal soul is been given to you by the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is great, it is well and good, take it into consideration and have those things. If that ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is not under the controlling power ministry, then take it for sure, dear brethren, without Christ, that issue can never become as a diamond, wherewith you have been chosen and kept, wherewith Lord wants none to perish, but everyone to come to know and understand this truth. Even for Zachary and I, it's an invitation. Even for whosoever is listening to this tape, it is an invitation for them to believe upon the Lord in the privacy of their soul. And believing upon that, they shall have eternal life. And these things, we shall continue tomorrow. Since our Lord has asked to walk two miles rather than one mile when a person needs for their help, it is our duty to exemplify and tell to them, because I know today's information is so tough for them not to understand, and this has been purely given to the pastors or even to the believers who are listening to this step and not to the unbelievers. But to the unbelievers, only one thing you have. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are a Muslim, honor your father and mother as per the law says. Your father Abraham believed upon Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his salvation. Not as a prophet, but as the only unique Savior who came. And for his day, it has been recorded, it has been reckoned as righteousness. But today, is it has been reckoned for you as the righteousness of the Lord or not? You just cross-check yourself. If it is not, then correct the path. If it is, yes then follow and believe upon the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. After believing only, you can follow Lord Jesus Christ and his footprints with that divine integrity of standards, wherewith Lord God, the Holy Spirit, energizes you to do that. And this Christmas, what you are celebrating, the Feast of Hanukkah, Feast of Dedication and Feast of Light, that's possible only to the believers to enjoy. Once again, if they give dedicated time to become a positive volition believers, and that feast could be great when they do it in the light of Bible doctrine. So we shall continue this as we celebrate and give you the exemplification of
Merry Christmas rather than we call it Merry Hanukkah. But with feast of dedication and feast of light is for us each and every day since we feast in the word of the Lord. And that's the responsibility given for a believer and for a pastor teacher like me. I don't have any other joy than to joy in the feast of Bible doctrine because the joy of the Lord is my strength and he's the one who makes my way perfect and that perfected way is only Bible doctrine through exegio, my categorical and isagogical study of the truth wherewith you are calling for each and every believer to enjoy that joyness given to us as a greatest privilege and greatest opportunity in this unique dispensation of the church age wherewith rightly dividing the word of truth through dispensation is what your target and your pulpit mission ought to be for we ask it this to be done for you with the love of our Lord, with a fervent love, wherewith you do not perish that love, but rather give that love to escape the divine anathema, because in respect of believer, unbeliever, pastor, teacher, or a mature believer, Lord tells to them, if anyone doesn't love the Lord with that love, wherewith he has given, with that undiminished true love towards this entire world to save the mankind, if you do not pay that back with the love of Philo, at least Lord has given us agape, we are called to give Philo, and if you are not able to give that Philo love towards back to my Lord, then you have been called as divinely anathema and maranatha, devoted to that because Lord is coming soon to judge. And Lord's judgment, if it is into action, it will be a greater punishment for us if you are not loving, though the grace has been given so great. So, dear brethren of a pastor teacher, start exegesis, start exegeomai, Teach the word through ice concept, isagogical, categorical, and exegetical study, and honor my Lord, Varvit. If you being leader hear lying words, your followers are wicked. If you being as a pastor teacher hear the truth from the Lord, you will not forsake the mercy of the Lord, but rather give maximum glory to his work and to his kingdom. Varvit, you have been called. We have been here to tell. Lord, we are here. We have done that which is our duty to do. And doing that duty is what we have been looking unto Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With our only work to dig like a drudge, to study the word of the Lord, and to exegete, and to preach the word. Caruso Thonbogan, with the herald nature, to maximum glorification unto Christ, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege that are given to us to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, and us, enlighten us in the things that we have studied, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. And, Father, we thank you for the grace that you are given today as, as well in your words. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. Thank you.